1 cubic centimeter of solution X into a test tube 1 cubic centimeters of solution Y. So you see that I put the droppers in the bottle so that I don't contaminate the droppers. So one dropper for each solution. 1 cubic centimeters of solution Z as well. So I prepare equal amounts of the solution, each of the solutions. Then I add nitric acid and look out for any changes to the colorless solution. So for solution X, add nitric acid always mix, add and then mix to shake. Shake to mix. Uh, so no colorless solution remains for solution X. Solution Y, I add nitric acid. And then I do notice a change. There are tiny bubbles form upon adding nitric acid. Where there are bubbles, there will be, that means that a gas is being evolved. So I shall come back to test for the identity of the gas. But for now, I shall continue the nitric acid to solution Z. And upon shaking and mixing, I realize I see that there are also bubbles. So then I would have to decide on the test for the gas. Since I added acid and an acid would only react with a metal or carbonate to give off a gas. Since X, X, Y and Z cannot be metals since they are colorless solutions. So I suspect that they could be carbonates, equal solutions of carbonates. So I pick up the lime water. I prepare my 2cm3 of lime water and then I add more of the reagent Y to generate more bubbles, to generate more of the gas so that I may test for the gas, the identity of the gas more easily. So I can also add <coughs> more of the nitric acid. So you, you just add more reagents to generate more bubbles so that you will more likely get a positive test. And in this case, I do get a white PPT in lime water. So I conclude carbon dioxide gas was given off, I conclude Y must have been a carbonate. So you disconnect and then you will pick up another portion of the lime water. This time uh, I am going to test for the identity of the gas that is given off when Z reacts. So I take another portion of lime water, 2 cubic centimeters will be 2 cubic centimeters will be enough. So, prepare the GB tube, add more of reagent uh, solution Z, add more of the nitric acid to generate more bubbles, to generate more of the gas, to bubble through the lime water. It's important we prepare the lime water first so that the bubbles, the gas will not escape. So, as soon as you add the Nitric acid, you get the bubbles and you immediately connect because you already have the lime water wave. You can shake the test tube to mix and then you will see a white precipitate form in lime water. So then, hence we conclude carbon dioxide was given off, that is also a carbonate. We go on to the next part. So we pick up the paper that uh, the test tube that contains Z, X, we add barium nitrate. Barium nitrate is the test for sulfate. We add, we are on the lookout for what PPT, and we do get what PPT, but we always mix shape to mix well. And we get a white PPT. We also do the same for wine. And nitric acid, very nitrate. Always shake to mix. And we get white PPT as well. So sulfate is also present. Nitric acid, a little bit. 
and then we will match it. Colorless solution remains negative result for sulfate. So that, that does not contain sulfate ion. We go on to the next part of the experiment. So you could uh, tidy up your bench. Just make sure that you can have enough space on your bench to carry out the experiment correctly and safely. So we are given solution P. We need to transfer solution P to a test tube. One cubic centimeter of solution P. So a dropper for solution P as well, so that uh, it's not mixed with the X, Y, or Z that was used previously. If you have to wash the test tube, remember to use Diana's water to wash. So you add the reagent, you get a PPT. This is the classic cation test. So you get a dirty green PPT. Now we are going to get ready to heat the mixture so uh, we will not add uh, until the test is too full. We could also transfer the mixture to a boiling tube so that it's safer. Uh, in any case, you should be just be very very careful whenever you are heating uh, liquids. So you see that I'm getting ready a uh, red litmus paper because I added sodium hydroxide and then I'm warming it. These two steps made uh, when taken together, it means that I'm testing for the presence of ammonium ion, which is confirmed by the release of ammonia gas. So I test using a damp piece of red litmus. So whenever you are testing using litmus, you always remember to dampen it, moisture it with the ionized water. So just be very, very careful. Uh, when you feel, you can hear the uh, mixture bubbling vigorously, bubbling more and more vigorously, move the tube away from the flame, but continue to test for the gas, keep the damp red immerse paper there. When you're heating it, put the tube at the tip of the tiny blue triangle. So you see that the red immerse has started to turn blue, this is already a positive test for the presence of ammonium <coughs> Ion, which is the uh, positive test for the presence of ammonia gas, which then indicates the presence of the ammonium ion in solution P. Still on solution P, we take another portion of solution P, 2 cubic centimeters of solution P now. of the red acid so about to the cylinders of it mix so. it's not very clear in the perhaps in the video but you would have noticed that solution P is not a colorless solution it's a shade of green to it so we go to the next part where we add Two cubic centimeters of P. Measure two cubic centimeters of P using a measuring cylinder. Transfer it to a boiling tube. We are supposed to make up to ten cubic centimeters using the still the Arnold's water. So now I will use the measuring cylinder and I will measure eight cubic centimeters of the Arnold's water, so that with the two that is already in the boiling tube, I have ten cubic centimeters of solution. So that's it.
cubic centimeters of gelatinous water. So you mix, you always shake to mix well. That gives us 10 cubic centimeters of dilute solution P, from which we will take 2 cubic centimeters for the next test. So I leave the dropper inside again so that I do not contaminate it. Then I add some acid, about 2 cubic centimeters. So it's, the color is a bit unclear here. It's not entirely colorless. But this is mangate. I'm supposed to add drop wines. What we see here is that the purple color per day manganate decolorizes. It loses its color instantly when it's added. So that's one observation. Purple per day manganate decolorizes. But the instruction tells us to add until you get a permanent pink. So you keep adding. And then you'll find that it's, it, at some point it gets harder for the pink color to go away. This, is, this must be the time where you are getting close to the point where the pink color will, never, will not go away anymore. So now you get some sort of a um, black brown color which is which may not look pink yet so you could control the addition so now i'm adding one more drop just to get the pink color that uh is that i'm instructed to so that's somewhat a pink a pale pink a light pink brownish pink kind of color with solution and then i from that Mixture, I take 1 cubic centimeters. I add equals ammonia. A few drops. And I get a PPT. Right? This is the classic cation test again, aqueous ammonia. I'm on the lookout for PPT, particularly I'm looking out for the color of the PPT. Now it's reddish brown PPT. And I get, and I add excess, three quarters, half to three quarters tube. And I find that the PPT is insoluble in excess. Reddish brown PPT, insoluble in excess. 